In this quick video, I'm going to show you how to build a text to image workflow in Comfy UI. So if you're a complete beginner, this is a great way to get started and kind of understand the basic nodes and how they work and how to get an image generated. So let's get started. I have the whole workflow here, but I am going to start a new one, a blank one, and we're off to the races. So I need my first node and that is going to be my load checkpoint node. And I can go over to my node library and search for my load checkpoint here and get that right there. Or I can do it another way. Um, just click that. Double click in your workspace, any blank area, and you can just look for it here. So we need our load checkpoint. This is a pretty straightforward node. The one thing I'll note is that you need checkpoint files. So if you don't have any checkpoints yet, you'll need to download some. And you can do that over in the manager up top. Um, and you can go to model manager and search for any named checkpoint you can think of. And I'm using the XL one, so you can get the exact one that I have. Um, and I'm going to get, get it by just clicking in this blank space and going here. It's the SD underscore XL underscore base underscore 1.0 dot safe tensors. Save tensors is the name of the files. You'll see that a lot on checkpoints. And the checkpoint essentially is the model's memory. It's a pre-trained model file that you can load in without having to generate images by training it yourself. So it's a pre-trained AI image generator. And the Excel versions, the SDXLs are great because they tend to have more parameters, higher resolution capacity. They're better at prompt adherence and image quality. So I like to use the SDXLs. Uh, and now we're off to our next node once you have yours plugged in. And that happens to be two different nodes, actually. So we need our positive text input and our negative text input. And we enter those in with nodes as well. And those nodes are called the clip text encode in parentheses prompt nodes. So I can double click on my workspace like I did before and put in CLIP clip text encode. You see it's the first one here. You could also just write prompt. That's easier to remember and it should come up in your search. So we're looking for our prompts. I'm going to copy by control C and then paste by control V so that I have two because one needs to be our positive information. One needs to be our negative. And if it helps you, you can double click on the name and rename it positive, negative, etc. But I'm going to leave them as is just so we really reinforce the name of this node, which is clip text encode prompt. Um, I like to see it to remember it. So we can plug these in right now to our checkpoint by just pulling out the yellow clip and plugging it in to each. You can pull out more than one. So as you can see, two are going in um, to two different nodes. So that's good to know. Now let's think. I want to generate like a watercolor style landscape image with like a bear in the water and mountains behind them. So how do I get that? Well, I just chat GPT the prompts, to be honest. <laughs> I don't always do this, but for this case, since it was a long prompt and I really wanted to get detailed in the information, I, I sometimes use AI to help me prompt. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. As long as you are the manager, as long as you're kind of the brain behind the operation. So we've got our positive prompt and I've got my negative prompt. I'm just copying and pasting it. I don't want it to look digital or unrealistic proportions. I want realism, but I also want watercolor. Um, so I think this is a good example image to get started. Um, okay, so we've got our prompts. We've got our words in there. What else do we need? Well, we need something called a K sampler. And if I double click in my negative space there and just put K sampler, it's that one here. So a K sampler is kind of like a sculpting tool. It takes the raw information that you're plugging in which is these prompts, which is stuff from the checkpoint, which is a noisy latent image, which I'm going to plug in in a second. It takes all of that and it customizes it based on some of these criteria. So it helps refine and define what we're making. Let's just plug in our positive and negative prompt while we're here so we don't forget. I'm just pulling out those plugs and putting them in. And also our model, which is that purple 
dot into our purple dot. The model needs to be defined in the case sampler. We understand that the model goes here, positive and negative. What is a latent image? Well, these AI images are made from noisy initial images. So we need to create just a blank noisy image for the case sampler to pull from and then take all this information, plug it in and create something from. So how do I get a latent image? Well, I can load a node or I can very simply just hover over this plug, pull it out into blank space with my left mouse button held down and then let go. And it will give me all of my little options that might make sense here. What I'm looking for is this empty latent image. So that's what I want. If it didn't work for you by pulling out, you can always just search for the node yourself, empty latent image, but that's what we're looking for. And this one will provide that noisy image to be plugged into the K sampler, but also we can define the size of the image. And oftentimes what you want is a 512 by 512 when working in stable diffusion or creating images with AI. But since we're using the SDXL model, like I said before, the XL models, actually are trained on 1080 by 1080 sized images. So they work best with 1080 by 1080. So remember that if you're using Excel. I just clicked on the width and I'm going to change it to 1080. And then I have to hit OK. You can't hit Enter or it won't remember. So make sure you hit OK and plug 1080 into both the width and the height. Now batch size, that will be how many images are created per run. So I want one for now, but I usually kick it up to four or two or something because I think the more images to choose from, the better you'll be. And that's one of the huge benefits of working in Comfy UI is that you get to create lots of images at once and it's just super flexible like that. So I certainly like that and we'll change that later. But let's get back into our case sampler and just discuss what the different options here do. So your seed is just a randomizer. It will produce different images based on the noise that it creates and the seed is deciding the type of noise. So if I use zero every time and don't change a thing, nothing else, I will get the same image generated every time. So if I want something different, I'll have to change my seed if I'm not changing anything else. Similarly, the control after generate is just a rule for how the seed will change or stay fixed or randomized or whatever after each generation. So it's very much like seed in that it can change things after generating. Honestly, I don't change that too much and I'm just going to keep it on randomize. Um, and you could always play around with this after you generate an image to see how it changes your image. Steps is really interesting. It is iterations or refinement passes that the sampler makes on that noisy image. You don't want to take too many steps. It will overdo it. So you've got to find a nice midpoint. I'm going to leave this at 20 and see what uh, what it looks like. And then I can change it afterwards. But remember, it's not always better to bump that up, but you definitely don't want it too low either. And I think 20 for now is okay. That's really a case by case basis thing. Now, CFG, similarly to the steps, is another refinement, but it's more of a guidance scale refinement that decides how strictly you're going to adhere to the prompts here. So an eight is, you know, not bad. I wouldn't go too low. Otherwise, your image won't be anything like your prompts. And too high may not allow it to have enough creativity to create something nice. So also play around with that. If you're finding your image isn't what you expected, I would definitely mess around with these two steps and CFG to see if that's the issue. As for sampler name, to be honest, I haven't tried all of these samplers, but I do know that Euler is good for testing and it's a common one. So I've stuck to Euler, but I've heard about the, D, uh, the DPMPs that they're very good and they are uh, great for creating higher quality images. So another one that you can test out, DDIM I heard is good for refining images as well. So I stick with Euler, but um, there's so many to play around with, obviously. And scheduler, the scheduler defines how much noise will get removed. And this um, is kind of a decision about faster versus higher quality. Also, certain schedulers work differently depending on if you want something realistic or more stylized. And that's something to research depending on what you're going for, right? So if you're wanting to make something cartoonish, you might want to pick a scheduler that is suited to that. Uh, I always use Karas. Harris. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce it, but that's the one that I've seen most people use. Uh, also normal, I hear is pretty good. Um, and just another one to play around with. And as for denoise, 
we're going to keep it at one because we want it to be denoised to the highest degree possible because we're starting with an empty latent image, which is basically a blank noisy image. So we want all that noise gone. We don't need it to be any lower. If we were starting from an image that we were changing in any way, maybe we would mess with the denoise. But in this example, in this tutorial, it doesn't make sense to go under one. So now that we have all of that defined, we need to know what's next. And that we can figure out by just pulling out this plug here, the latent plug. So this makes it so much easier than searching for nodes because you don't totally have to remember the name of it. You will get some options. So I'm pulling it out, letting it go. And what I'm looking for is the VAE decoder. That's our next step. That will take into account all of our case sampler options and all of our prompts and everything and create an image from what it's told to create based on everything else. So this is our almost final step. All we need now is a preview image. So if I pull out the image on the VAE decoder and let that go, we'll have a couple image options here at the bottom. Save image, which will save it every time, and preview image. And I stick with preview image because quite frankly, I don't want to save every single image that I get. They're not all keepers. So let's just preview them and then I can save them if I like them. And then I'm just hovering over the corner to pull it out, make it big so that I can see what my image will look like. And now I'm just going to comb through and see if I left anything unplugged. Even though if I just run it now and um, try to get an image, if there's issues, it will prompt and let me know. So if something's not plugged in, it's okay. Uh, I can see here that my VAE needs to be plugged into my VAE. So I'm going to pull out that red plug here and plug it in. Now, if you get an error when you run it, make sure that you've got everything plugged in. You'll see a circle around the ones that aren't plugged in, and that should help you figure out what's going on. So now it seems like everything's plugged in. I'm going to leave my batch size at one for our first round, and I'm going to just kick up my seat a little bit. Um, you don't have to do that, but <laughs> I'm just doing that. Okay, let's hit run and see what happens. Now, the K sampler is working right now. It's in green, so you can see that it's going through. And look how fast that happened. I've got an image here of a bear in uh, near a lake with mountains in the back and trees in watercolor. It's so beautiful. That's wild. I can't believe how cool um, image generation is. Even like after 100 images, I'm still like so into it. Um, okay, so now the batch size. Let's bump that up to four. I, like I said, like to keep that a little bit higher so I have options. And let's run it again. Now this is taking just a little longer because it's creating four images, but still not very long. And look at that. I have four images here and they're all pretty good. I'm not hating any of them. I think they're so cool and unique. I get unique ones every time. So now I can see uh, the images larger if I just click on them and I can see it. And if I go to this one fourth little icon here, I can hit that and see the next one and then the next one. Oh, beautiful the next. And if I want to save any of these, I can just right click, save image. I can save it to my downloads or, you know, any folder, just as you would any picture file. And if I want to see all four again, I just X out and there I can see them. Perfect. Ugh, I'm obsessed. So that is the basics of image generation using text. This workflow is so important to know because you'll be using these different nodes as your image generations become more complex. And it's really important to understand the basics so that you can build on that. And I hope that this video helped you guys understand a little better. I still am a novice myself, so hopefully if you have questions, I'll be able to answer them and I'm gonna continue learning and making videos like this. So if you liked this, give me a like, subscribe to keep watching stuff and let me know in the comments your thoughts. I really appreciate you guys watching and happy image generating. If you want to support me and see what I've been working on, check out my explainer video channel.